Welcome and good morning to our first live stream of the month of May. We're so thankful that you're joining us. Uh, we've been thrilled to see over the past couple of weeks people joining us from, of course, our church family. Also, here in the Virginia Beach area, uh, people joining in that are not normally attending church at New Song, and then people from other parts of the country as well. So regardless of, of where you're tuning in from, we are so thankful that you're joining us today. And we have an incredible morning for you. Uh, one of the ways that we, we want you to participate, you would do us a huge favor if you would push the share button. Just let other people know that you're watching and that they can watch along with you. I know that a lot of you have already been participating by small groups this morning. Our small groups are meeting not in person, but over Zoom teleconference. And I'm so thankful for how many of you have been participating in those. In fact, I want people to see how, uh, what good participation we've been having there. So would you do me a huge favor? If you were in a small group Zoom meeting this morning, I just want you to type in the comment section, I was in small group with, and then name two or three of the other people that were in small group with you. I want people to be able to see uh, that the great response that we've been having to these Zoom small groups. I know we want to be meeting in person. And we for worship time, we want to be meeting in person. We hope that it's not going to be too much longer before we are able to do that. We'll talk some more about that at the end of today's broadcast. But for right now, just let other people see and know, uh, those of you that have been participating in small group. During this quarantine time, we've been talking about the attributes of God, God's goodness and his grace and his patience and the fact that he's the giver of life. And today we're going to be talking about the fact that God is all-knowing, that God knows everything, literally everything there is to know, and why this is so important to us, why this should give us such encouragement and hope. So I hope that you'll stick around with us. We have a great morning with our church family participating by scripture readings. That's been one of the highlights for me, and I know for many of you as well, to get to see your church family. I appreciate your help uh, in making those video recordings during the week. Uh, we also have a special scripture reading coming up for you a little bit later. I believe we may have a baby update from Ryan and Sarah, and you will want to stick around for that. Also, uh, Shane will be leading us in worship. And I want to say a special word of thanks to Shane. He's been doing a fantastic job uh, recording and producing uh, the worship segments during the week. And uh, I, ju I just want you guys to know how great of a, you can see how great of a job he's been doing, but I want to say how much I appreciate that and how he's helped to lead us in worship in that way. And with that said, I want to encourage you to sing along this morning. Whether you're by yourself or whether you're with other people around, I know it may seem a little strange, uh, but put down the multitasking, participate with us, sing along with us, uh, sing along with Shane as he leads us this morning. Uh, we serve an incredible, awesome, almighty, unstoppable God, and we get to worship in the same place today. So sing along with us in worship.
nothing shall be nothing shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore jesus our god unstoppable nothing shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore jesus our god Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Do you know how God controls the clouds and makes his lightning flash? Do you know how the clouds hang poised, those wonders of him who has perfect knowledge? Hey guys, I brought my telescope along with me today. I thought it would be a great way for us to talk about the idea of learning and knowledge. Uh, I think there are few objects that represent better the search and the human quest for knowledge than a telescope. I mean, I got this when I was a kid uh, because I was interested in being an astronaut and uh, my parents got it for me so that I could look at stars and planets. And really the, the best thing to look at was the moon because of the power of the telescope and everything. And uh, I think this magnifies about 100 to 150 times uh, what you can see without any magnification. Uh, a couple of years ago, I brought it home for the kids uh, to use and to see how the telescope works. Uh, but for years, for, for centuries, people have been looking at the stars and at outer space through telescopes to see things that we could never reach on our own. We had to learn things that were beyond our world. People had a thirst for knowledge, and, and that's awesome. I love the fact that people wanted to learn. And really, that, it's something that's really important in life to learn and to have knowledge about something. I mean, when you go to the doctor, for example, you want a doctor that has a lot of knowledge about health and the human body and diseases and sicknesses so that they can treat you. In fact, if the normal doctor that you go to doesn't know enough about one particular disease or sickness that you have, you go to a specialist that has more knowledge, more experience in treating that. You want people that know their subject backwards and forwards. When you're studying in school and college. You want to take the professors that know their subjects so well that they are experts. You learn so much more from professors that know their subject well. They have so much vast amounts of knowledge that, that they can share that knowledge with you. You want people, when you're depending on something for graduating or for uh, your health, or when somebody's coming to work on your house, you want a contractor or a carpenter or an electrician who knows their field really, really well. And speaking of graduating, I believe we have somebody that's got a graduation coming up this week. And I wanted to take a minute to say congratulations to Julie Rogers and the work that she's done, put her mind to becoming a dental assistant, and she is well on her way. Graduation coming up this week. I'm excited for her. I know you guys are excited for her. I know you want to see a couple of these pictures. 
Julie, I know your family is super proud of you, and I want you to know that we are too. I hear that Wednesday is Julie's last official day, and then she'll be able to take the board exams and walking in September. So we are so thankful for you, Julie. We're proud of you, and we wanted everyone to see you dance because of how happy you are at being done with dental assistant training. I expect that she's thoroughly embarrassed now, but that actually really helps out a lot today as we're talking about learning and uh, studying, going through a degree program and graduating. Uh, that it just gives you one example of how our uh, how our culture treasures learning and knowledge in, in order to do a specific job or have a specific degree. You have to know, you have to demonstrate that you have a certain base amount of knowledge to be competent in that field. Knowledge is really, really important. And uh, knowledge is kind of a funny thing because you start to learn about something and our first reaction as people is to get really confident in how much we know about that subject. Uh, but then as you learn more and more about it, your confidence actually drops because you begin to realize, you know what, I may know a lot more than I used to know about this, but the more I know, the more I realize that there's a lot that I don't know about this. In fact, I saw a graphic similar to this one that you see on the screen right now on the internet a while back, and it's all it stuck with me so much because I think it really uh, paints a picture well of the way that knowledge works for us as people is that we begin to learn about something and we uh, dive into it and we think we're becoming masters of this subject and we think we begin to know. But then the more we know, suddenly our confidence crashes because we realize that there is so much that we actually don't know. In fact, a part of education is realizing what we do know, but then also the vast amounts of knowledge, even about a subject that we are uh, that we have studied and may have achieved some level of expertise on, we realize that there is still so much that we don't know. That leads me to the question that I want to ask for interaction this morning. I know you guys have interacted a little bit. I, I asked you to put in uh, who is participating in your small group this morning. Uh, but here's a question that I have for you. If you could master, completely know everything there is to know about one specific subject, one particular subject, you would know literally everything there is to know about that subject. What would that subject be? And type your answer down in the comments. I want other people to see because I think we're going to get a, a wide range of different answers. This could be something that you already know a lot about and you just realized, you know, there's a lot more that I would like to learn about this. Um, and uh, so it may be something you already know a lot about or maybe it's something you've always wanted to know about and you just never had the time. To, to learn and invest in uh, really becoming an expert on this subject, but it's something you would always love. So it might be something you know a lot about already. It may be something you know almost nothing about already, but if you could choose just one subject uh, to learn everything there is to know about, what would that subject be? Uh, I mean, I would probably give you different answers depending on my mood at the time, but right now I feel like I, I love learning about World War II history. Just that time period is fascinating to me. And I, I know a lot more about that than the average person, but I know that there are vast amounts of knowledge that I just don't possess. There's people that know so much more about that than me. And I love learning about it, but I know I'm just like at the very foot of the mountain of trying to learn and master all that there is to know about a specific historical period. So that, that's me. I want to hear from you. What, what would you want to learn about if you could know everything there is to know about one particular thing. I bet we're going to get some really cool answers. So uh, if you see a cool answer, by the way, push the like button or uh, comment or reply to their comment and just let them know uh, that you think that's a good idea as well. Because for us as people, uh, it's important for us to keep learning. Uh, one of our elders, Ron Verostek, has a saying that he uh, he's mentioned to me a number of times, and he usually says, a day without learning is a day wasted. And it's true that we ought to go through this life constantly curious and learning more about the world that God's created, more about history, more about how things work and how to do things we don't already know how to do. I mean, there's probably some of you during quarantine time, you've looked on YouTube to learn how to do new skills, either fixing the house or uh, working in the yard or fixing your car or something like that. There's always new stuff that we can learn. And I love learning new things. You should... I, 
I believe that followers of Jesus should be naturally curious people. We should want to learn as much as we can about this world that God has given us. But while we're doing that, here's one thing that that should remind us of. It's the fact that God is completely unlike us in this way. God never had to take a course. God never had to set out on a degree program. God never had to type in how to fix a radiator or how to change a spark plug into a YouTube search engine because God already knows everything. There is no speck of information all across the entire universe that has escaped God's knowledge or his notice. You cannot teach God anything. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about that God does not change, that God is the unchangeable God. And this is one of the realities of his unchangeableness is that God can't learn because God already knows everything. In fact, if God were to learn something that he didn't know before, that would imply a change and a deficiency in his prior knowledge. So God already knows everything everything there is to know, both past, present, and future. We're going to talk some more about that in a minute, but right now I just want to focus on how mind-blowing that truth is, that God knows everything. The amount of information that's available to us is said to double every couple of years, and terabytes and even bigger chunks of information than that, of information all across the internet, Knowledge and information, which is different in some ways than wisdom, that's another subject, but just pure knowledge and data in, is increasing at such an incredible rate right now that is, it is almost hard for us to understand, and it's certainly unparalleled in the rest of human history. And as much as, as knowledge and uh, information is increasing right now, as exponentially as it may be increasing. It's still only a speck of dust compared to the incredible, exhaustive knowledge of God. Things that we have just discovered recently, God already knows. Things that we want to discover, God already knows. The things that 10 years ago to us now seem obsolete, and we were excited about that, uh, God already knew about that hundreds of years, thousands of years ago, before, before us. He's known the end from the beginning, the Bible says. So the things that are going to blow our minds, that are going to exist 10 years and 50 years from now that we can't even imagine, to God, that's like first grade math. He's like, yeah, I already knew that. And he, he's encouraging us along as, as if we're children, as if we're as if the smartest, the most brilliant scientists among us. They discover new things about the world and about the universe. And God's cheering us on like we're at kindergarten graduation. We're, we're not even, we've not even begun to scratch the surface of his incredible knowledge. God knows everything. His knowledge is exhaustive. And that just shows one of the realities that's so glorious about who God is. We're going to worship him today because of his vast, incredible, exhaustive knowledge. And we're going to talk about what that means for you and I today spiritually as well, because it's not just that it should blow our minds and we should be so amazed at it, but the knowledge of God is meant to give us hope and peace in this life as well. So worship again with us today. Uh, sing along with us. Uh, let's celebrate God and his infinite goodness and his character. Everything that God is, he deserves our worship. Splendor of a king Clothed in majesty the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice
As we begin to talk about the fact that God knows everything, that his knowledge is completely exhaustive, there are three main categories that I want us to talk about today that describe God's perfect, exhaustive knowledge of all things. The first category that I want to talk about is that God knows everything, both big and small. I mean that God knows both the overarching flow of human history and all of the largest details and flow of how the universe is expanding and where galaxies and planets are moving, big things like that, and small things down to the tiniest details as well. Listen to this verse from the book of Job that talks about God's knowledge of the biggest things in all of existence. Job 28 verses 23 and 24. God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. For he views the ends of the earth, and he sees everything under the heavens. Think about that verse to someone in ancient times when there were parts of the world that had not been explored yet when the book of Job was written. They said, there are boundaries to our knowledge as far north or south or east or west as we've traveled. Those are our boundaries, but God knows far beyond. He knows all the way to the ends 
of the earth. There is no boundary to God's knowledge. He sees everything under the heavens, is what the book of Job says, which is so amazing. But sometimes we can get so caught up in the fact that God knows the big truths of the universe and the world that we can forget that he also knows the small and intimate details of my life and your life today. Here's a passage that I think is very familiar to you, and I want you to listen to it now as Sharon reads the Lord's Prayer for us. After this manner, therefore, pray, ye our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the kingdom come that will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and for the kind kingdom, and the power of glory, and forever and ever, in Jesus we pray, amen. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and the Lord's Prayer is the example that he gave of how you and I should pray to God. One of the amazing things about the prayer is how short it is. A lot of times, if we were to pray a prayer that short, we would feel like we were rushing through, but this is actually how Jesus tells us to pray. In fact, just before this prayer, Jesus has cautioned us about praying too long. And the reasoning that he gives in verse 8 is fascinating. So this is the verse right before the Lord's Prayer. Here's what Jesus says. Do not be like them, meaning people that pray and go on and on. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Your Father knows what you need because God knows everything. He knows what you need. He knows the details of your grocery list. Everything that you need. God already knows, so you don't have to go on and on and list every single thing that you need because God knows intimately the details of your life to know what you need and how best to provide that for you. That's the picture that we get from the Lord's Prayer of a God who is concerned not only about the, the overarching themes of human history, but also about your and my individual personal needs that he is ready and willing to provide for because he's a God who cares. And not only the fact that he's a God who cares, but he also knows even before we ask. It's an incredible picture. So God knows everything, both big and small. That's the first category. Here's the second category. God knows everything, both past, present, and future. There is no time where God's knowledge falters. There's no guessing that God has to do about what has not happened yet. There's no detail of history that he's forgotten. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Part of God's glory in the book of Isaiah is the fact that he knows the future so well that he can predict and he can tell what is going to happen in the future before things ever take place from ancient times, he's going to make known what is still to come. You also have him saying he's going to declare things that have not yet come into being. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. It's usually not hard for people to accept that God can know all of the past and all of the present, but sometimes people are puzzled by the idea that God can know the future before it happens. But verses like these and others in Scripture, where God says he makes known the end from the beginning, and he declares things that have not yet taken place before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Lots of places in Scripture tell us that God knows the future, can tell us what's going to happen if he so chooses, and he is never going to be mistaken. He's never going to be wrong about the future. The reality is that God knows past, present, and future. All of human history, even beyond the end of the world, as Jesus returns and God sets up his eternal kingdom, God knows past, present, and future. There is no time in which God's knowledge fails or becomes deficient. So God knows everything, both big and small. God knows past, present, and future. And here's the last category that I want to share with you today, is that God knows everything, both actual and potential. Now, this is 
getting a little bit into some heady theology. So I'm going to try to do this quick. Just follow along with me. When I say God knows everything actual, that means all the things that actually take place. Everything that, that it has taken place, is taking place now, will take place in the future. God knows all of that. But when I say that God also knows what potentially could happen, that means that God knows every possible eventual outcome of every situation that could happen. See, I went into the restaurant today and I could have either ordered spaghetti or lasagna. Well, God knows that I actually ordered spaghetti. He also knows I could have ordered lasagna if what would have happened if I had ordered lasagna and all the details that would have taken place in the alternate world that would then exist because I ate lasagna for lunch instead of spaghetti. Every single detail, every single choice, every single occurrence in life that could have happened differently, God knows the difference of what if it had been different. Now that's kind of mind-blowing to think about because there are millions, billions, maybe trillions of things that happen every day that could be different than the way they actually happen. But God knows what would have happened in any specific instance that he wants to think about. It is absolutely incredible. Let me show you one verse where Jesus talks about what would have happened. Matthew eleven twenty one, Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethesda, for if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Now, there are a number of passages that teach the same truth, but here in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says, If the miracles performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago. In other words, God knows that they didn't repent, but he also knows what it would have taken for them to repent. You also think about Jonah going into the city of Nineveh. God sends Jonah with a message that God is going to judge, implied if you don't repent. They do repent, and God knows that if they hadn't repented, he would have destroyed the city. But now that they did, he's not going to destroy the city. And Jonah, at the end of the book, he's depressed because he wanted Nineveh to be destroyed. But God knows the outcome, every actual outcome and every possible outcome of every single circumstance. You and I, a lot of times, we like to think, well, what if I had done this? Or what if I had made that choice back at another time in our lives? And in some ways, that's a, a useful way of analyzing situations and things like that. But the reality is you and I never know what would have happened if, because there are so many other factors that may have come into play that you and I, we just, we don't know about. We never would have considered, but there is never another factor that God hasn't considered. There's never an outcome that God hasn't known. So he can know all truth, all reality, both actual and potential, all at the same time. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. All my ways. All my ways. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, you Lord, Lord, know it completely. completely. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if, if I, I settle, settle on, on the far side, side of the, the sea, sea, even, even there, there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. For you created my inmost being. You created my inmost being. For you, For you created, created my, my inmost being. being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because, because I am fearfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your, your eyes saw my unborn body. body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. All the days ordained for me were written in your book 
before one of them came to be. Search, Search me, God, God and, and know my heart. heart. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. And lead me in the way everlasting. When we hear a passage like Psalm 139, it really drives home how important and how awesome it is that God is all-knowing, what kind of hope and confidence that gives us in this life. So I want you to dwell on that and maybe even more since you just heard that incredible scripture reading from our church members. Thank you guys that participated in that as well. I want to share with you during our last teaching segment three different ways that God's exhaustive knowledge, the fact that God is all-knowing, why does that matter to us? Why, why does that give us hope? The first reason, the first of three, is that God has specific knowledge of the details of your life and my life. You are not unseen. I know that there are some of you that may even feel like in this life you are unseen by other people, but I want you to know that their opinion doesn't matter and that God does see and he knows everything about you. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. How can that be? How can he know the hairs on our head? I don't know that. I don't know how many hairs are on my head. I certainly don't know how many hairs are on your head. And if I were to try to count, I would lose count very quickly. There are is no way for me to know. I mean, do you know how much work it would take to learn that kind of information? How many hairs are on my own head? And God knows it already. And even when some fall out, even when I get, I mean, we don't really want to talk about hair right now, do we? I mean, when's the last time you got a haircut? A few people have shaved their heads. Like, I don't want to do that, but I need a haircut. And I don't know. The, the number of hairs on your head, God knows. And that's, ju that's really just a metaphor because God, if you were to ask God how many hairs are on my head, he could actually give you a number and it would be the right number. And he might tell you three seconds later the num what the numbers changed to if some of them fell out. He could do that. But that's not the point of, of that verse. It's to note that God knows every single detail and he cares about you. So the exhaustive all-knowing God that we have. He, he cares about you and I so deeply and so specifically that it is beyond our comprehension. That's the first thing I want you to know. He's knit you together in your mother's womb. He has made you into the person that he wanted to be with the body that he wanted you to have, with the mind that he wanted you to have. He's made us all different and he cares about each one of us down to the smallest, tiny detail. Now, that's the first thing that I want you to know. Nothing escapes God. He knows the specific details of our lives. Here's the next one, is that God will not miss any details of our lives. Either our faith, our belief, our trust in him, God, it will not be missed by God, nor our rebellion or our sin. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those who are fully committed to him. So I can tell you today, if your heart is fully committed to the Lord, that he knows that more than anyone. He is not missing that fact about you, and he is pleased to welcome you in faith. If you've never trusted in Christ before today as your Lord and Savior, if you've never been forgiven of your sins, if you would simply believe in Jesus, he would forgive your sins and you would be justified before God and your heart as it's justified before him, God would not miss that for a second. And he would rejoice along with all the angels in heaven. He's not going to miss your faith, but he's also not going to miss your rebellion. I want you to listen to this from the book of Hebrews. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. There are some parts of God's foreknowledge that are hugely encouraging and give us strength and hope, but this is one that could lead us to despair if we're not careful. 
God knows everything about us. There's nothing hidden from him. The fact is we can fool people. Sometimes we can put on a mask. We cannot let them know what we're really thinking. Sometimes there are details about our past that we can hide and hope never come to light. We can fool other people, but there is no fooling God. Everything is uncovered and laid bare, laid bare before him is what the book of Hebrews says. This can be very unsettling. It can be sobering. It can be fearful to realize that there is no hiding from God, just like Adam in the garden was searching for something to cover himself and his shame with. Sometimes we are looking to cover our shame and our guilt with as well. And knowing that God knows everything, every detail, even down to our thoughts that we want to hide and not let anyone know about, it can be fearful. But here's where I want to take that fear and despair and help turn it into hope. It's the fact that God knows all of your secrets and details and he's always known them and he still acts toward you with love and grace and acceptance. There's no thought that you're going to have tomorrow that's going to move you outside of his love and care. There's nothing that you're going to do if you belong to Jesus that is going to take him take you outside of his grace. God knows the worst. All the things that you have done in the past and the blood of Jesus has washed you clean. He says, I will remember them no more, which doesn't mean that he literally forgets because God doesn't forget anything. He knows everything. It means that he's not going to recall them and bring them back to the to in front of his sight. He's not going to bring them back into memory. He's not going to act on those anymore when he says, I will remember your sins no more. God knows all. There is no hiding from him, but he still acts toward us in grace because he is a gracious God and he is good and he is patient like we've been talking about throughout this series. So what could be fearful, I hope will turn for you into joy. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. This is the last aspect of application that I want to give you this morning. When the Apostle John wrote his letter to the early church, he knew that there would be some of them just like us, that our minds would constantly and continually go back to the ways that we have failed and always be telling us that we're not good enough for God's grace and his love. And John wanted to encourage them in that time. He said, if our hearts condemn us, we need to know that God already knows everything that, and that he is greater than our hearts. Because the reality is that Satan is going to whisper into your ear so many times that you failed and that God is not for you, that you're not under his grace, but God is greater than our hearts. Sometimes our hearts don't tell us the truth. Sometimes our minds don't tell us the truth. And we need to preach the truth of God's word back to ourselves in times like that. Yes, God is greater than our hearts and his grace is more incredible. I'm not able to escape it even when I fail. There's a song that uh, one of the lines of it is, when Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of my guilt within, upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. In other words, I look at the cross. When Satan is telling me, when my heart is telling me that I've failed and that I'm not worthy of God's grace. What I do is I look to the cross and tell myself that God is greater than my heart. He's greater than my sin. He's greater than everything. He knows my sin past, present, and future, and he has received me because of faith in Jesus anyway. God knows everything. God doesn't need a telescope. God doesn't need to learn anything. He already knows more about you and I than even we ourselves will ever know And he still loves us and welcomes us with open arms in spite of ourselves. God is amazing. His goodness and his grace and his knowledge are all things that bring us so much hope and joy in this life. So will you worship him again with me this morning? It cannot hide the light.
shall I fear? You crush the enemies underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Whom shall I This is our baby girl, Eliana. We're so blessed to have her. We want to thank you all so much for all your prayers and the gifts that you've given us during this time. We couldn't have done this without you. Thank you again. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad you got to see baby Eliana and Ryan and Sarah today. If you can even still hear what I'm saying right now, I don't know. The cuteness may have broke the internet. So, you may not even be able to see what I'm saying right now, but if you can, uh, we're thankful for them, and I'm thankful for you and our church family who have been reaching out to them with meals and prayers and gifts and everything like that. Please continue to do that as you're able to, uh, and uh, we want to wish them the best. Continue praying for them as well. Let me give you a couple of announcements before we go. First of all, uh, we are considering details about what it looks like to begin meeting again in person. That's still a number of weeks away. Uh, but I want to just let you know that we are thinking about that. Ask for your prayers for wisdom for me and for our elders and other church leadership as we consider the steps that need to be taken between now and then to get ready. I want you to know that 
We are going to still provide live streaming even after we begin meeting in person, because there are some of you that may be in higher risk groups that are not going to be able to come back and meet with us initially as we begin meeting in person. So that's okay if that's you. If you're not comfortable coming back in in person uh, at that point, you'll still be able to watch online 1045 a.m. Uh, live stream of our worship time. It won't be the live stream format like this with me standing here talking to the camera and the scripture readers coming on the video. That can, we'll be in the worship center and you'll be able to see the worship center the our worship service in there. Uh, so pray for us as we prepare for that. Uh, we're still a little bit of time away from that, but we want to do that in a way that's honoring God and uh, wise with uh, keeping everybody uh, as safe as we can through this. And uh, so we're, we're going to be working through that. And uh, you'll, you'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. A couple other things that I want you to know about. Um, we celebrated Julie's uh, graduation earlier today, and I want to say congratulations once again to her, and I uh, also want to say that we have a number of high school seniors that are uh, close to graduation at this point. We're going to celebrate them as well in the coming weeks, so if that's you or if you have a high school senior in your family, keep that in mind. Get some photos ready, and we're going to, we're going to consider how best to uh, celebrate their accomplishment as well, and I'd love to do it on these live streams uh, just because it, it's a great uh, it's a great way to help you to see and connect with your church family during that time. So uh, keep in mind, we're not meeting in person. So uh, we would still love for you to visit uh, newsong.live slash give uh, for online giving. We're not passing the baskets around today, obviously. Uh, but uh, we still uh, would love to have your financial support and uh, giving if you are able to during this time. We know a lot of people are financially strained right now. So uh, please uh, know that we understand. But if you are able and if it would bring you joy and uh, you believe God is calling you to support the church during this time, I'm thankful for the support we've already received and just encourage you to continue. Either mail in your gift, 865 Woodstock Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23464, or visit uh, online giving at New Song. Uh, dot live slash give almost forgot almost said it wrong so i think that's everything for today I'm so thankful for you joining us today and uh may god bless you this week I, I i hope that you're seeing his face and his power and his grace shine down on you in so many different ways uh throughout this time so let me give you a benediction to send you out the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace Amen.